and we can hit this is a special uh, OGM Open Global Mind pop-up call to talk about DSRP, a uh, meta model for thinking. Uh, we have with us a uh, highly trained and very enthusiastic DSRP fan uh, in Scott Mooring, uh, who is going to do a bit of explaining about it and I think take us into some exercises and conversations so we can kind of feel what this is and, and what's going on. And Scott, I really appreciate you doing this. Um, and whenever you want to, whenever you're ready, take us in. Thanks, Jerry. Um, yeah, I think, uh, you described that perfectly well. My, my goal here is to just try to introduce something and then see what you think. Um, so just as a little level set, um, I'm a graphic designer. That's what I do. I make art for pinball machines currently. Um, I do not have a book. I do not have a podcast. I do not have a money generating website. I have never been paid to speak. This is a guy who found something three, four years ago and thought it was really fascinating. And I've been trying to teach or show as many people as possible so they could possibly add it to their quiver. So I really don't I mean, again, I, I'm not trying to direct people to a consulting gig or anything like that. This is just, I grew up, stuff was always showing up unexpected for me and I'd be in new situations, I wouldn't have any idea what to do. So I collected frameworks for decades because I thought it would help me, you know, be in situations where I could figure things out and have a little better sense of what was going on. and. They helped, but they always had limits. You know, you always bump into the edge of the framework where it worked or where it didn't work or where it applied or you try it and then, you know, oh, well, that didn't work. So anyway, I, I landed on this and I think, I don't know, I, I, I got it right away and I thought, wow. Um, and there's been four years and I'm still, I'm still wow. So um, that said, let me see if I can introduce this shortly, briefly, and then we'll just kind of kick the tires and see what people think. So I've started to, to think that this is an interesting way of doing it. Um, so we talk about thinking. Um, you know, there's all kinds of ways people talk about thinking. And, you know, we've got like at least 30 different there's critical, there's pro-social, there's scientific, design, shallow, flawed, systemic, logical, critical, all that stuff. So, but what we're missing is what's, so what's the thinking? What are we actually doing when we're thinking? And I don't know if you've ever given this some thought, but when I have asked anyone I know, what are you actually doing when you're thinking? And you cannot use a synonym, synonym, synonym of the word thinking. So you can't say pondering, cogitating, mulling about, uh, analyzing, synthesizing. Because that really, if um, I had this great story about this fifth grader who came up to his teacher and said, hey, you know, you're, you're telling me to think about this. What do you mean? And she was kind of stunned at the moment because she didn't really have, I mean, what do you tell someone? So I will jump into, um, these are the, well, by the way, huh, I did this a couple of days ago. This is in a uh, pinball league. I explained this to somebody in 30 minutes on the back of a napkin. And uh, they said, you know, if everybody learned this, we could change the world. And this was a couple of 30 somethings who'd never heard of this before. So I will do my best to see if I can get, um, I don't know, get this to, let's see, do, do, do. start a slideshow, see if I can share my screen, share screen. 
I've never done screen sharing and whiteboard. In fact, I yeah, it says it'll close board, the whiteboard, so which it is doing. Okay. I think yeah. you're in good shape. Yeah, it looks like I'm good. Zoom has gotten remarkably more able to be figured out in the moment, which is very cool. Okay, so I'm using this slideshow because I've I've I put it together, and I think it's at the risk of seeming overly simplified. It's like the easiest way to dive in that I found. Um, Okay, so how do you start? I'm going to think about thinking, how do you start? Well, start with a thing. There's a thing. Okay, we're going to name it. Excellent. Now we have our surfer. We have our thing. Oh, interesting. So once we have a thing, what we've done is we've said this thing is also not everything else. There is the surfer and there is everything else. So by distinguishing something, making a distinction, we have identified a thing and identified the other. So that is our first pattern. This is the first of four patterns of how what, what thinking is, what we are actually doing. We are distinguishing things from other things. That seems pretty straightforward. All of these are straightforward once you hear them. That's pretty straightforward. Let's move on to the next one. Surfer, we're back to our thing. Is it all one thing? No, it's made up of other things. So what do we call those other things? We can call them parts, okay? Things are made up of parts. So what happens when we have a part? What's the bigger thing that contains the parts? We call that a whole, okay? So now we have a whole with parts. That's the second rule. This goes pretty quick. We have any idea or thing can be split into parts or grouped into a whole and different kinds of holes. So that's rules one and two. Number three, we're back to our surfer. So let's add another thing. Now we have two things. Are they connected in any way? The waves are acting on the surfer and the surfer is moving up and down. Surfer is reacting. Actions, reactions between things, between parts, between holes. Rule number three, relationships of action and reaction. Any thing or idea can relate to other things. And you'll notice that these little symbols on the side here are just diagram language. It doesn't mean that we've actually captured all of the nuance. It means that this is representational of all the patterns. So let's move on to the last one. So here's the surfer. Can we look at the same thing in a different way? Yeah. What did we just do? We changed what we're looking at. Changed our view. So notice what, else, what happens when we do this. We now have a point looking at a view. We call this a perspective. But if we change the point, well, now the view changes. So this is our fourth rule. Perspectives, anything or idea can be the point or a view of a perspective. So now we have the four patterns of thinking. And they're in every thought for every person, every time. Every framework, every idea, every concept, every conversation, every organization, this is, they're, they're present in all of them and all four are present at the same time. So, I will now stop sharing, go back to the whiteboard, 
And let's see what shows up. All right. So I don't know. How does how does that how does that resonate with everybody? Is that is I mean, obviously you're all keeping up because this stuff is not complicated. It's working great for me. I don't, I don't know if anybody else has comments. Jump in if you'd like. Okay. Keep on Fair going. Enough. Fair enough. All right. So the the things, the arguments that you get, uh, that I get tend to be, all right, well, this is interesting, but so what? Or um, are they really all same time? Generally speaking, I don't hear that one too much. Usually it's, oh, there's got to be more than that. There's some kind of, there's something that you're missing. There's a part in here that this doesn't include. There's there's something about reality in our thinking that is not included in here. And if that comes up for you, please shout out and we will try to take it apart and see what we find. Um, so. One thing that is really useful to do with this now that you understand it is look at a network diagram. Okay, so nodes and edges. Well, you already are going to start to have a way to see the DSRP pattern in this. Well, the nodes, those are distinctions. They're identities, they're objects, they're things. Great. What about the lines connecting them? Those would be ours. The edges are ours. They're relationships between those things. So then we can add more distinctions. So this is called structural predicting with DSRP. And what it means is when you see a diagram like this and someone says, OK, well, here it is, some of the questions that come to mind to be able to dig deeper, to understand it better, are simply applying the basic DSRP elements. All right, oh, those relationships, they're just lines. We need to distinguish those. Let's call them something. Let's put a name on them. Um, an example would be something like this, where people start to label those lines. Has, does, produces, leads to, et cetera. OK, well, that's helpful. That now shows us a little bit more about what's already there. So now what happens if we add systems? Oh, systems of parts and holes. Oh, OK, well, now we've taken that relationship line that we distinguished, and we've added parts to it. We've taken each one of the nodes and added parts to it. We've made a little mini system out of each one of those. Those are all neat places to look because DSRP predicts that they're there. A thing will have parts. Those parts will be part of a whole. And then we can move on to perspectives. So now we have this system of distinctions with parts and holes, relationships that have been distinguished. But each one of those nodes can be a perspective on the whole system. So for example, if this was color, and you had black and white, and then you had light colors and dark colors. And over here is middle gray. Well, you can look at the whole thing from the perspective of middle gray. And oh, well, these relate to it. These are contrasting, et cetera. But any one of the nodes can be perspective. And so what's interesting about that is that you end up having a way of analyzing things that you don't even know what they are. And you can look at things that you've already seen before. So for example, let's look at this. I just grabbed this off of Google image search. I said, show me some frameworks. Uh, we've all seen all of these or variations of them, right? So now put on your, uh, your, new, your new knowledge of distinctions, parts, holes, identities, others, relationships of action, reaction, perspectives. And that's what they're all made of. 
the SRP is agnostic. It is just the containers. It is just the structure. It doesn't care what you put inside of them. This is how things are built. That is the that is the the theory. That is the what's being put forward by this is that is it's a it's the structure of stuff. Um, so this can really help in when you're looking at a new model that you see. Okay, what's there? Well, let's see. Let's look at this one. This was one that I had seen in the moment. You don't have to understand any of this. You might, but you don't have to. Look at this from a DSRP model mindset and think, I'm seeing this for the first time. Someone is showing me this. What kind of questions am I going to have? Well, let's see. Um, distinctions. I'm seeing a bunch of identities. Um, actions. I'm seeing a lot of actions. I'm not seeing any reactions. I'm not seeing arrows going back the other way. Um, part whole. All right. Seeing a lot of parts. All right. Is any of this grouped together? Are any of these grouped into chunks of holes? Um, that's unclear. And perspective. From what perspective is this model made? So these are the kinds of questions that you would have looking at something like this to say, oh, well, I see what this model is showing me, but I can also see, based on what I know that has to be there, that those are not being represented. OK. Same thing here. Similar kind of diagram, except now it seems like the relationship lines have a distinct have been distinguished. There's an identity on those. Okay, well that's a little better. Um, leads to feedback. Let's see. Leads to changes in inputs and processing. Okay, well what could I think about that? What are the parts of leads to changes in? All right, maybe that would be really helpful to know because you can just put the leads to changes in and you could say, well, why, how, how does that work? And just knowing the patterns, four patterns, distinctions, systems, relationships, perspectives, eight elements, identity other, or is, is not, part whole, action, reaction, point and view. You can just look at these and say, all right, I can see what these things are and I can see what I'm missing. Jerry, you get to get a little, a little spot here. You might recognize this. So this was a post-it note um, video, wonderful thing, about 15 minutes long, done several years ago as you were working out some roles within the OGM community. What am I seeing here? What are you seeing here? Does anyone want to? Want to offer up? I'm seeing distinctions. That's easy. There's a lot of different. There's a lot of different post-it notes. There's a. There's a. They've been distinguished. They're not just blank post-it notes. There's actually words on them, describing what they are, which also describes what they aren't. And they're grouped. They're grouped. There's a part-whole structure here. Um. How about some relationships? I'm seeing some relationships between the orange ones. Those seem to be related in that they might be holes, in a sense. Um, this is clearly from the perspective of Jerry. However, those groups, that roles group, well, all of those are grouped from a perspective. And I've often typed in the OGM chat that a category is simply a part whole group from a perspective. Well, those pieces, those little notes are grouped under the perspective of roles. If you were to disassemble this grouping and come up with a different perspective, say um, pay grade or who's included in the main meetings and or whatever it happens to be, suddenly these groups would they all rearrange because perspectives change the groupings, they change the distinctions, they change the relationships. 
All right, so then uh, here's another one. I think we've seen this before. Um, and as you look at it, you can see the distinctions that are being made, that are created. You can see there's also, by looking at this, uh, there's, a, there's an idea that the visible DSRP is identity or thing, part, action, and view. Those are all the things that are kind of de facto. The invisible ones tend to be other. So what is not being shown? Whole. What is this a part of? How does this roll up into bigger things? Reaction, you know, which we, we've often seen with unintended consequence. Um, and then point which is what is the thing that is doing the observing of what we're seeing here that mm. changes the groups. So this is all from Jerry's perspective. Um, but Scott, it's, a, yes, absolutely. Just a small note about this, because this is a, conf a virtual conference that happened in 2020 that I was part of. And there's a, there's a distinction in here that's not evident from the, the, the diagram that you only learn by watching me do this a couple times over, but it's interesting. The names that are above Unfinished 2020, which is the, the event name, the names that are above are people who were panelists or speakers at the event. So they were on the program or organizers of the event. Like Christian Movila is actually, uh, he and Cappuccino are the, are the actual producers of the event. And the people below are people I met through the event. So new acquaintances with their LinkedIn profiles. And that's just a cliche that I've created for when I when I put events in my brain. I don't have a handy way of making that distinction actually visible to third parties. So they'd have to infer that or learn that by sort of doing this over time. Or maybe it doesn't matter to them. But you might be wondering why there's some names above and some names below, because it makes it a little bit fuzzier what the distinction might be. Um, so I, I'm interested because it would be fun. I, I don't use um, labels or tags or mm -hmm. metadata in the brain, yeah. not because I hate metadata. I love metadata. I don't use labels or tags because it takes a lot of extra time and work to, to, to do them. And I think that the speed of use of the tool is more important. But I could create a nomenclature of, of tags on these that says met at or spoke at or something like that, which would clear up that distinction. But I haven't taken that extra step. So thank you for jumping in, Jerry. That that was that was interesting to me. It cleared it up for me. And one of the nice things about having this language, um, I did see an email about not wanting to be having to be indoctrinated before you can work with someone, which I think is a is a really valuable and, and interesting comment to make. Um, and I I agree with it. Um, so I'm not sure how to to drop this comment out. What I've noticed is just understanding the things that I've shown you already, just those just those eight words of you know identity other, part whole, et cetera. Jerry, you were able to describe this using the word, well, you know, there's a there's a distinction here that isn't necessarily clear. And as soon as you say that to someone who knows the DSRP model, I understand exactly what you're talking about. You're making your thinking clear to me. Oh, there's there's a distinction. Okay, so now I'm looking for a thing and a not thing, an is and an isn't. Oh, okay, well, the, all those names at the top is, those are speakers. Okay, well, that means that all the other ones are not speakers. Okay, you've now given me a boundary. I have an identity and another. Okay. And then you flip it and you say, oh, the, the ones below is what they are. Those include all of the people that you met, which makes all the speakers now the other. It instantly flips. But because I understand the language and because you kind of prompted me and said, well, I'm making a different distinction here, I can follow right along with you. It's really easy to do. Um, so uh, Gil, Gil's raised his hand. I don't know if you want to take this question. Now. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry, Gil. Yeah. Thanks, Scott. Um, uh, I appreciate the formalism of it. It's very clean. Yeah. Uh, 
um, I think you, when you were showing Jerry's example, you you used the the, the, the phrase brainwashing or or somehow uh, you know. Oh, indoctrination was the email that I had seen, and I, I I'm sensitive yeah. to that. Yes. Yeah, so what you say is indoctrination. I I heard as more Jerry sharing his point of view and the distinctions with which he has constructed his model. Yeah. Um, so you know, a more neutral. Um, what I'm yeah. not clear about, and maybe this is where you, where you're going next, is how how would you use this in practice? I mean, if you go back, if you go back I, up up to the systems diagrams. Yeah. Yeah. Um, either of those. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I mean, what I'm looking at here is not a formalistic, you know, identification of the components in the way that the DRC, the SRP does. I'm looking at what are the dynamics? What, okay, what, which, what is this thing? Uh, what are the relationships? What are the causal drivers? How does one, how do the relationships affect each other? Yes. Uh, et cetera. Um, yes. you know, in, in relation, you know, obviously I see you have, you know, goals and implicit goals here in relation to expectations, desires, gaps, and so forth. So how does DSRP enhance my interaction or my use of this diagram? That's that, that part's not clear to me yet. Sure. Okay. So here I have three things in relationship and you said, okay, well, well, here's how do these things relate to each other? Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. You know what? We haven't distinguished this relationship. So mm -hmm. then we also have how do these relationships interact with each other? What it does is it gives you the way that you can uh, analyze it, that you can critically think about it, that you um, that you can approach that inquiry. How do I guess is kind of what I probably have not made as clear. Well, so could you I, give us an example using one of these? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, Can you zoom in on the 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 BCG four square matrix on the upper right, the green one with the star and the cow and the because yeah. I think that I think that's familiar to everybody as a sure a business school thinking framework. Okay. Yeah. Um, so the one on the upper right, and Gil, I think just in talking through how it works, you start saying, oh, it, this thing tries to distinguish between different kinds of investments or portfolio uh, opportunities, and then. Saying what's the system they're in is oh this is a portfolio and how does the portfolio work and then the relationships are some of these you're going to invest more in some of them you're going to invest less in yeah. and then the perspective is I'm the investor looking at this making decisions about whom to put where or I'm one of the cash cow uh, you know operators saying yeah. um, what are you going to do to me now that if you're going to starve me for cash and try to milk me milk my profits I better change my strategy totally. so I'm just thinking it through. One of you could be regulator, it could be Greenpeace, could be whatever. Bingo, but, bingo. I, I get all that. Uh, I but let's absent the formal description that Scott's giving. These are kind of intuitive, implicit. But uh, you know what we're all doing all the time anyway. So what's yes. added by having the formalism overlay? That's what I'm wondering about. Okay, so uh, the, the the key to DSRP is it is metacognitive. And I know that most of the people here are already metacognitive okay. and very familiar with that. And so for many people, they are not aware that they are already doing this. Okay. And I would argue that uh, even people in this group are not aware that they're taking that there's a point or that there's a hole or well, see, now this group is particularly good at taking it and saying, oh, well, you're showing me this one thing, but that's part of this bigger thing, or you're showing me this bigger thing. Well, there's all these little things inside that. Um, so it's the value in it is being formally metacognitive and not just saying, well, you know, I intuitively sensed this. All right, mm -hmm. what did you sense? Mm -hmm. Describe what it was. Was it a, well, you know, um, I think that there's some different you're missing a part here. That's what I'm sensing. And so what's interesting about this, because I did appreciate your email about where's the, the poetry of life in mm -hmm. here. So for example, um, well, you know what, maybe I'll just I'll just give you a little story. So there's a there's a kindergarten class. They're out in, and this is a true story. This kindergarten class is out at an apple orchard. And they 
they they email the professors and they say, you know what? They have the teacher email the professors and they say, we were looking at the apple and we think we found something because we've got this apple, right? And there's this little thing down here. And we think we discovered a new part. Do you know what this is? Has anyone found this before? So what they had was apple and they had stem and they had skin and they had, we'll call it the flesh, I guess. And then they had, this is DSRP. It is a DSRP distinction, but it, or part, but it doesn't have a name. So there's a placeholder for it. Mm -hmm. And then they went out and they found it was it was called the calyx. Mm -hmm. And then, oh, where do, where do you put that word? Oh, you put it right here. But we already had a spot for it. Mm -hmm. And one of the things about the mysterious, the ineffable, the, the wondrous, the magical, is that we are somehow drawn to ask about it, to dive into it, to wonder, to pursue. And to do that, all you need is this thing down here that you're not really sure about mm -hmm. and your relationship to it. Is it part of something else, do you think? Does it have some parts, maybe? What's my speculation? And so it's a way of inquiry mm -hmm. that is formalized by using those eight elements. Mm -hmm. And that's all you need is the is the is what's being posited here. Mm -hmm. So there's only eight. And if you can come up with another one, please, because I've I've looked for four years and I haven't been able to find one that doesn't fit all of this. Can Does I, that help a little bit? I've got two other questions coming up, but just real quickly, it helps a yeah. lot. Um it it I, I can see its value as a um what's the word for this? I see its value not pedagogically, but real practically in working with groups and not even saying here's the DSLP framework, but just right. you prompt certain kinds of questions and inquiry to bring people into a more metacognitive relationship yes. with what we're talking about. Yeah, got it. Thank you. Ex excellent. And, and Gil, at the end, towards the end, what I'm going to do after a few more questions is I'm going to move to something that are known as the moves. Mm-hmm. Okay. The moves are frameworks that have been built using this to help people so that they aren't just given, here's eight Lego pieces, go build something. They will give you a little more direction about, okay, just do these five moves and the research has shown that you're going to be, that's 80% 80, 80 of the application of this. And I'll cover that towards the end. Great, thank you. Okay. Yes, um, um, my, my hand went down accidentally. If I can, spend, <laughs> yeah, jump, I'd, jump like, in, Jerry. I'd like to. I think I'm, I muttered something, and it cancels your hand when you when it hears your mic go off. Um, I wanted to offer a complimentary answer to Gil's question, which is, I there's two. I have a similar reaction. We're, uh, most of us on the call are systems thinkers. That's one of the reasons we have an affinity for one another, and one of the things that informs our conversations a lot. And yeah. to a good systems thinker, some of this is like, well, duh. Yeah. Uh, but in thinking about the value, I thought I thought of two kinds of value right away. One of them is CRISPR language. So as you just commented, when I was explaining the the brain snapshot about the unfinished conference, I was I, I was in, um, intentionally using the language you had presented us to describe some aspect of this diagram. And I was like, well, that was fun and easy. And I think it gave me CRISPR ways of explaining to like minded people what the heck is going on here. And then the second thing is. The, especially the perspectives, the, la, the the P in DSRP is like, oh, okay, it might be a very useful exercise to wheel around this diagram, maybe systematically, maybe randomly, but to take more perspectives or to rethink <laughs> what the perspectives might even be, because I might be missing a perspective that uh, that 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 otherwise I would just step past. Jerry, you're you're, you're wonderful. Can um, well, hey, I share an example of that real quick? Yeah, and Gil, I'd like to say something as you jump in. Yeah. One thing towards the end of your comment, you said, "What's the word for that?" 
And my brain instantly thought he's coming up with the right distinction. He is making a distinction right now and I'm anxious to hear what it was. Yeah. So that was in the last comment. Please, please go ahead then, Jesse, we'll get to you. You said these, this is how everything is built. It's not just how everything is built. This is how we relate to how everything is built. We draw distinctions. We say this is this and not that. Correct. The, in the real world may be much fuzzier. In the, the real, real world, world might... is clearly all built by an intelligent designer. Otherwise, it wouldn't be that complex. We all know that. Um, that. Uh, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. So just as an example of the point of view, I was years ago at a uh, workshop with Howard T. Odom, who was one of the uh, generative sources in energy systems modeling of industrial and living systems. Brilliant, brilliant guy. Back in the days of analog computing, which he preferred to digital, but that's another conversation for another time. And he did this thing that was maddening to us for a while. And he, you know, he, it was a room full of accomplished people from many different disciplines. And someone would ask a question and Odom would ask like, who are you, where you're from, what's your profession? Uh, and it sounded at first condescending the first few times he did it. And then we realized that he was instantly translating everything he said into the language of the person that was wow. asked. Yes, it was wonderful. To their point of view, explain it in their point of view, not asking them to do any translating. And it was very powerful. And, uh, you know, anyway. That's a wonderful example, Gil. And it actually relates directly to what Jerry had said. The fifth move of the five moves that I'm going to show you is called a P circle, which is a perspective, perspective circle. It's just a framework. But what it is, is an identity, a view, a thing, and you look at it from different points, mm -hmm. okay. which is exactly what that speaker had done. Does that make sense? We'll come back to these later, but that's that's P circle is, is one of the five moves. Yes, I've been waiting patiently, so let's go. Okay, Jesse. Uh, really quick, when I started diving into this, I really loved what Derek said about where he was a uh, mountaineer. And he said, if this is one, if this is just one life lesson, DSRP, it's we have to learn to love reality, the system. Yes. So you seek the truth, even no, even though when it hurts or it makes you mad or sad. Yes. And yeah. So embrace the truth of the situation for the best remedy. And that's why I see this being so amazing. So thank you. Thank you, Jesse. That's a perfect segue to actually the only other thing I wanted to show you before we get into the moves. Mm -hmm. um, that is, as you all know, the map is not the territory, right? Mm -hmm. These are all just diagrams, these are representations. However, what it's based in is some pretty high level stuff. Mm -hmm. This is not just someone that came up with this on a napkin and said, hey, well, actually, maybe he did, but it was there's years and years of work trying to figure this sort of stuff out. And it can all be simplified. And you know, when you simplify, you lose fidelity. But the reason I show you this is that there's other stuff underpinning it. But it can all be simplified into, this is directly related to what Jesse was talking about. A little bit more. So we see oh, both. sorry. Yeah, sure thing. Let's see. No, 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 no. Just scroll them up more so, so we can see both of these black boxes. The bottom one was cut off. Yeah, you'll see the other one in a second. Okay. Okay. Um, so what you have here is that our mental, our mental models are what we're seeing. That's our idea, our thinking, if you will, um, of what's going on. It's made up of information and structure. The structure is the DSRP part, the parts, the holes, the, the groupings, the relationships, all that sort of stuff. Um, a simple example is if I say four, I'll say it again, four. What does that mean? Well, it kind of depends, doesn't it? Because that's information. I didn't tell you if it's F-O-R, F-O-U-R, the number, F-O-R-E, you better duck because you're on a golf course. That's just information. The only no, way it means something is if we actually structure it with DSRP. It's actually not information. It's it's sound waves. It's data. It's data. And okay, without, data, without, information, without, same. Without some context, there's no information context. Yes. So so I would, I would say information, data, it's... I, I would consider those in this reduction to be sim um, okay. simultaneous. So then to Jesse's, what Jesse's comment, that mental model is then approximating reality and giving feedback. Reality is giving feedback to say, what matches, what doesn't match. And so if it doesn't match, learning 
is a change of the information or the data plus a change of the structuring. I'm now making a different distinction because it's from the perspective of someone else in the audience. Changes the mental model. That's technically what learning is, which is a fascinating thing. And I know that there's only so much I can go into in the, the time that we have, but I'm hoping to just kind of whet your appetite and give you some things to think about. And then if we end up here, this is the full model that they've been now testing and researching the idea that the structure of our thinking is intended to match, not a match, align with, closer align with the structure of reality. And if it doesn't, then we don't get the results that we want. Our predictions don't end up being true. We are actually a worse thinker, which is a, a way of thinking about it, that if if your mental model does not align with reality, this is what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. We've been thinking about that all wrong. I didn't expect that. I can't believe that happened. There's no way they could get elected. Those are us saying, oh, well, my mental model is right. And reality, reality is wrong. And it's like, no, that's, that's not how this works. The goal of all of this and what they're what's they're trying to show is that reality has distinctions and groups and relationships and perspectives. You look at bacteria, a, a white blood cell distinguishes between different cells, which ones are the ones it's supposed to go after and which ones are other. All of the others, they're all grouped together into don't consume that. So that gets again a little bit. Um, the, the I guess the gist of that whole little segue there is that. Um, let's see here if I can show this. Yeah, if you find something that helps you better align your thinking to reality, which means what you model gets you what you expect, then use it. I personally haven't found anything better than this. And I, I please, if you find it, let me know. But I, I think that this is, um, that's where we are. So I have about 15 minutes left. I'm going to pause here before I go into the five moves. Cool. Anybody else with questions who hasn't jumped in yet? Thoughts? Just a, a very uh, quick question on that last slide you had. Why is structure listed as a T rather? It uh, says okay, so so th that's very observant. Thank you, Ken. Um, so when you again, when you reduce something to a simple simple graph, simple slide, you lose some fidelity. I maintain the T in here because I want to remember that that's the thinking. So we have the data plus the thinking, but it's actually it's technically structure or organization. And we make distinctions, I think is what Gil said. We group things, we split them into parts. And what we're trying to do is then look to see if the parts are really what we split them into. The distinctions that we made are really the distinctions that we see in reality. And so by having the T over there, that's the structure of our thinking. And then on the other side, it's the structure of what's really there based on what, what we observe. Okay, is that good, Ken? Awesome, thank you. Next. Excellent. Anybody else? Yeah, Scott, I have a question. So yeah. I'm, I'm seeing this in a, in, a, in a business setting or a more analytical setting, I could see applicability. Yep. What about for a you know, complex charged political topic? Do you ever apply this to, you know, some some groups would call it sense making or yeah. sort of uh, clarifying, even if it's just clarifying your own personal beliefs on something. Do you, do you use it in that way? I will clarify again for those who came in late. I'm a graphic designer. I work by myself. I am not a PhD. I'm not a speaker. I don't have a book. Well, that's me for your personal, yeah, for yeah, personal yeah. use. So personal in, use. in personal use, I mean, the most complex thing you have is, is uh, other people. <laughs> that's the most complex thing that I think you'll ever run into. And 
I will use this as a segue to one of the other moves. All right. So we're going to call this. We're going to call this the RDS barbell. And these are just names to help make them a little more uh, memorable. All right. So we have two things me and someone I know, me and my company, two countries, two companies, government and a company, two groups of people, left and right, doesn't matter. There is a relationship between them. Relationship, that's the R. Oh, what's that relationship? I don't have any idea. We better distinguish it. Okay, now we're gonna, name it something. We're going to make it not just a relationship. We're actually going to call it something. Contentious, amicable, helpful, who knows. But then, because we combine all of these things, this is the magic of, of DSRP, is they all exist at the same time, and you can infinitely stack them and layer them. We're going to add parts. What are the parts? of my relationship to Google. All right, well, dun, 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 dun. we're gonna put that. What are the parts of the relationship between Russia and the Ukraine? So what happens is by doing this, that is parts, I've now systematized it. And it is a wonderful way to dive in and figure out because of course, these are just all those little bits in there each one of those is its own little identity. Scott? Yes. Could, could I ask this last question maybe in a slightly different way? Yeah. Which is, um, you're a graphic designer, so I assume you have clients. How does yeah. this show up in your work or relationship or something with a client, explicitly or implicitly? Yeah. Well, I mean, so my relationship to a client, most people, I think, I mean, somebody they, calls and says, Scott, I need, you know, I need a website designed. Yeah. Okay. Well, okay. So who's this for? Mm -hmm. So now, now what we're looking at is, well, let's see, who is this for? So now we have the client and then we have the uh, audience, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, what are we going to call this? Is this going to be sales? Mm -hmm. is, is this going to be uh, education? Is this going to be um, likes? Is this, you know, what? how are we going to distinguish this thing? All right, well, what are the parts of sales? Okay, well, we have to have, all right, well, actually, we're going to have a product on there. Then we're going to have the sign up for the newsletter. Then we're going to have the sales channel or the sales site, Spotify or Shopify or whatever. Oh, and then each one of those little things, you can blow it up and inside of it is a whole bunch of other stuff. But it tell it shows you it very, very quickly lets you orient around um, around the situation using what's really there. So mm -hmm. instead of showing, uh, oh, well, you know what? I'm going to use the uh, design thinking framework for this. Well, maybe maybe that works and maybe it doesn't. But I know for sure that there's a client and an audience. And I know that based on structural predictions of DSRP, they have a relationship. And I know that that relationship has parts. Okay, so then I can build the actual structure of the model based on what's really there instead of on, um, the way I've heard it is, you don't want a detective to come to the crime scene already knowing what happened. Right. Now, they come there and they say, what do I see? How does it fit together? And that's where, um, so that's how I would use it. It's enabled me to, I mean, I've had conversations with people who are having struggle, you know, struggling in a relationship with something. Mm -hmm. And just by saying, what are the parts of that relationship? Mm -hmm. It turns into some of those are good. Some of those are bad. When before the only thing they had was a line. And usually it said, this relationship is terrible or whatever. So that's an example. Um, I have, I think in the 10 minutes I have left, I can take five minutes and give you the rest of the moves. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so we now we have a P-circle, which is obviously perspective-based. Change the perspective, change the point, and you change what's seen. Mm -hmm. The RDS barbell, we have relationships. By zooming in and looking at those relationship parts, we can actually understand something a whole lot better. And you can look at it, you know, any of the, well, I think I had shown that, any of the parts, um, any of the relationships, any of the things can have parts. So then um, we're going to back into this here. The next one is going to be, by the way, Zoom, uh, Zoom whiteboard is actually pretty cool. I've used a number of them, and this seems to be, see, it's a tool I'll use again. Mm -hmm. um, thanks, for, thanks for using it to demo this for us. It's helping. Yeah, well, it's the first time I've ever used it for a meeting. I did a little, little pregame, but... You can preload stuff and it's real interesting. So we're going to call this a part party. So what does, you have a hole. A hole is going to have parts. Well, walk into a room, see a bunch of people. What are you not seeing? What's invisible? The relationships. Well, the part party says we are going to look at the relationships between all of those parts. Now, as we know, I, I'm getting ahead of myself here, but but you can combine the RDS barbell and the part party by looking at what are the parts of this relationship, because that's the one that's really struggling right now, or whatever it happens to be, or the one we want to focus on. Mm -hmm. So that's a part party. It's a, com it's a combination of part whole and relationships. Um, let's see here. So now we're going to do, see if you can guess on this one. Zoom in, zoom out, or zoom, zoom. Well, what would be zoom in? You have a thing. Looking at part, looking at part. Looking at part, in you go. Or the one that's less common, you have a thing. What's it a part of? Mm -hmm. What's that a part of? What that? What's that a part of? You're zooming out. Okay, pretty straightforward. That is our part, part whole structure and a move that you can actually do, which tells you in the moment, how can I use part hole? Well, zoom in, zoom out. In other words, I could zoom in, zoom out on this part right here or on this perspective because that perspective could have parts, probably does. What's the perspective of the United States? Well, there's a lot of parts there. Okay, um, last one. Do, 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 do. We call this the DIO list or the is, is not list. DIO, which stands for distinctions of identity and other, DIO. So that's a shorthand when we talk about DIO, we have distinctions of identity and other. Systems of part and whole relationships of action and reaction, perspectives of point and view. So what would a DIO list look like? Well, let's see. We take a thing like Jerry's uh, mind map about that conference and we say is, we say is, and we say is not. Well, um, is, well, these are all of the speakers or this conference was about something and this conference was not about something else or it contains all these people and doesn't contain all these other people. So those are, those are the five moves and they are the easiest way to dive in because now you don't just have to try to think about all of the different elements but if you are so inclined, that is a really easy way to jump into anything.
I'm looking at this part right here. Well, I know that it has relationships. It has an other. It has actions and reactions. It could be the point of a view. It could be the view that something else is looking at. So you can definitely dive in that way. Jerry. Um, yeah, thank you. I, I love these, love the moves. I started sort of following you into the zoom in, zoom out and got myself tangled in my shorts a little bit because <clears throat> a really interesting thing, I think a tool that I often use is pointing to a different container for the current setting and saying, yeah. actually, you think that the zoom is this outer box, but it's really this other box. Yeah. And I guess oh, yeah. that's a that's a shift in perspective. But one of the one of the yeah. fears one of the fears I think some of us might have is that when you do this in some rigid sense without a sense of flexibility and exploration, you might predefine a set of uh, of container relationships, <clears throat> you know, the the zoom in zoom out yeah. that that predispose the solution to the problem to be your solution instead of yes. a much more reasonable one that exists with a different framing of the set of the situation. You are absolutely correct. And what's so interesting about all of this DSRP is that you can think poorly with DSRP. You can think flawed with DSRP, but what it enables you to do, if you understand it, you can look at someone who says, well, here's the hole for that part. And you can say, oh, well, actually from a different perspective, that's the hole of that part. Oh, wait, there could be two. And you nailed it. How would you do this? Well, from perspective one, from P1, we are looking at it this way. From P2, we've just done a P circle. Oh, it's a different hole. I get it now. That person belongs to a different category, depending on how you, you look can, at it. You can right? start to see your way over to argumentation theory or evidence building or other kinds of things from that because you would you would want to build those arguments out, et cetera. It's, it's interesting. It ties into other kinds of models. Well, really quick, before we get to you, Gil, um, one of the things that I had uh, had noticed as I was preparing for this is how would you use this to think critically, think differently, get your bearings? And I think the answer is pretty clear in all of this that you would use the DSRP structures to take something apart or to build what you're seeing. But what, what I added that I hadn't noticed before I've made this presentation was, this is how you disagree respectively and productively, because you can say, you know, I hear the distinction you're making. From the perspective of X, I think it's a different distinction. So you can actually engage with the argument at a level where you're not saying you're an idiot. It's more well, this part of the thinking model is is different. Okay, Gil. Um, just real quickly, um, these five moves, are these your names for them or Cabrera's? Those are the Cabrera's names for them. And they're just, again, designed just to make yeah. them a little memorable. And are they, are they sequential or you go in any order you want to do at any moment? As with any of these things, you do it at any order and you can then, they call them the five plus because you can do any of these and then you can combine them, which sure. I said, you I tried to say a little bit that you can zoom in, zoom out on, on that perspective, one of the perspectives in the P circle or do an is, is not list as, a, as part of one of the parts in the park party. Mm -hmm. um, so there is no sequence to this. And now, because we are human beings, there's a sequence because we can't, do them simultaneously, but they are they are existing simultaneously. And the easiest way to think about this, I had a, a quick exercise. Think about yourself. We're going to use you, Y-O-U. You are an identity. You are an other. You are a part. You are a whole. You are an action, you are a reaction, you are a point, an observer, and you are a view, yeah. something that is being observed. And that's happening simultaneously. Yeah. Good. Thanks, Scott. Good stuff. You're very welcome. <clears throat> yeah, Scott, thank you so much. This has been uh, delightful. And I think we're at the top of the hour and that makes it makes sense to wrap. 
Um, it's been super awesome. You're on the list. You're in our community. Anybody who's got more questions, I'm sure we'll tap your shoulder. Mm -hmm. um, but thank you for this. I, I'm realizing that my a piece of my joy in using the brain is that it doesn't use DSRP, but it helps model and separate and segregate those kinds of things. And I find myself doing a ton of system two grouping, clustering, differentiating, distinguishing, and then trying to explain using that tool. And this might just, this session I think is gonna help me clarify that a little bit. Just one other thing for people may not have seen it, Scott put together a beautiful slideshow summary of all this stuff. Uh, so you might wanna share the link out again. Exactly, the, the, he put up a page of resources that I put in the invite uh, to this call, which is really, really good. I'm going to have to hop for another call. Thank you so much. Okay, you're very welcome. I'm Thank you, Scott. Glad to see you all. I'm going to put that in the chat right now. You're very welcome. Perfect. And and uh, then you can go take a look and and I encourage you if you're interested. It's it's inexhaustible from what I've I've seen. It's practical and yet it's also mm -hmm. as deep as you want to go. We'll see you, Gil. Awesome. Thanks, everybody. Very very much. All right, we'll see you later. Thanks, Scott. Thanks, Scott.